Hello out there. We're on the air. It is Rodcast Night tonight or, or something like that. Rod Black with you, where once again, we have another episode with some of the biggest names, the brightest names in the world of sports and arts and entertainment, what have you. Can't think of a better way to ring in the new year to say happy 2023 than with two of my great friends and two of the greatest athletes I have ever covered. Tessa Virtue, Scott Moyer, Olympic champions, world champions, people champions. Let's roll the Rodcast. The Rodcast with Rod Black, brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win. Now here's your host, Rod Black. Look at who's here. <laughs> my favorite peeps, without a doubt. My favorite athletes that I've ever covered. They know it. You know it at home. Uh, and uh, here's the thing. This is the first time I've ever, it's not even an interview. We're just going to talk. I've ever chatted with these two and they're not together. You're serious. Like, usually you are together like that and you are on the screen but now you're apart, but you're kind of always together, etched in everybody's minds. Hello, you guys, and Happy New Year. Hi, Rod. Thank you so much. And I mean, we I love and adore you. We we just, you're, you're our favorite. And I mean, I don't want to derail us right off the get-go, but the number of times, and Scott, you'll know this immediately, the number of times my brothers say, Money in the bank with a little pink boy. <laughs> <laughs> or have your little rod isms. Oh yeah, there's a lot of them embedded into our family. <laughs> just like regular speak, it's oh. so, you've just been yeah. such a our lives. I uh, emceed an entire wedding trying to be do a rod black essay, and it went <laughs> off great. <laughs> oh, you poor soul. Uh, <laughs> the thing is here, and you mentioned the rod isms or whatever. Uh, it's been a long time. Like I've covered you guys mm -hmm. for a lifetime. Like I think you were six and eight or seven or nine and something like that. And I remember seeing, and I went, Oh my gosh. And, and Tess, you're, you're absolutely one of the most beautiful people in the world, but it was Scotty. I go, this guy's the cutest little guy. He's so cute on the, <laughs> he's happened. so cute. I thought this and look at them. They're dancing and they look at what they do and look what you became. And isn't it crazy how life flies? Oh, and stuff happens and you win Olympic gold medals and world championships. It's insane. Yeah. It feels fast. Now, when I look back and now, like I said, I'm, I don't know if you know, but I'm at a national championships right now. And, uh, you know, it kind of feels weird Rod, to have a national champ. This is kind of the first real national championship since obviously the pandemic and, not to have you covering it is and what you've done for our sport. I mean, it doesn't quite feel the same, but even to be at one of these without Tessa, it just, it's gone by super fast, our whole career. And we used to be like, uh, yeah, the team that always talked about oh, 22 years or whatever. Um, and we've been in this thing so long. It seemed like we were the young ones and then all of a sudden we were too old. But when we look back at our career, as long as it was, uh, it really did just fly by. Yeah, yeah, Tess, you, you know, used to that split screen stuff. Yeah, no, look at that. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like there's Scotty's always supposed to maybe you can just move back a little bit. You always kind of look like you're just behind Tessa that normally when we interview. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, there, sorry. There I'm you sorry. go. Yeah. Then, yeah, like, I, yeah, but, I just, but it is it, like, it, yeah, it is different. Uh, and I want to get into skating because we can talk about a lot of stuff. I want to talk about skating and where it is now and, and what it has become. But what you guys did to the sport was absolutely incredible. And then, you know, people before you as well. And let's, let's start at the beginning, Tess, you, you, and, and feel free to just jump in whenever. Um, but when I did see you, um, and when it was Scotty's aunt, right, Scott, that yeah. your aunt that got you guys, maybe you could tell the story, Tess, of how you guys actually, this, this great love affair between the two of you for skating mm -hmm. that began at such a tender age. Yeah, it's funny. And Scott, you just said 22 years. And I suppose that's the way I think of it. But at the same time, I also think, oh, it's been 26 years because just like right. I feel we'll always be partners and time goes on. But so does that partnership. It just evolves and it looks different. So I um, figured if like we just froze at 2018, yeah, we wouldn't have to get older as well. <laughs> yeah. You you have done that gracefully, but I'm hanging on. <laughs> at 
Yeah. At, well, I remember meeting Scott when I was six and he would have been eight. And I was part of the Ilderton Skating Club. Scott's aunt Carol was teaching me. And Scott, maybe you have a better sense of this. I don't know exactly sort of the nuances of the story of how we got to be paired up. But part of it was my sister and Scott's cousin thinking that it would be comical slash maybe cute if we dated. Yeah. <laughs> and I just happened to probably be the right size for you at the time because you had a previous partner. And, um, but I do remember starting to skate with you and I mean, I don't want to romanticize it too much, but almost instantly finding joy in it and finding this love for dancing and sort of working together. And it was kind of cute too, oh. though. He was kind of cute. <laughs> oh yeah. Maybe we had, a little, you know, we had an energy crushes. Right you know? I mean, we didn't think we were going to win the Olympics by any means and nobody watching at that stage thought we were going to win the Olympics, but we always, we always had an energy and that pure joy. That's, that's actually, I don't know if I've ever really reflected on that, but I think the, from my side, like I think my aunt was a bit, bit smart, a little bit more conniving, maybe uh, smarter. She dealt with three boys in the sport. She was a good agent. Yeah, she's yeah. a great agent. But me yeah. and my, she had to coach. Like my mom's a twin, so my my aunt is a twin sister, and they switched kids. So my aunt got the way worse end of the deal, having to coach us three boys. And I think she saw, like, I think she saw something between Tessa and I. She kind of waltzed in, had just started to skate. Um, you know, she started young. But for me, I'd spent my life already into that point, like sleeping on the hockey rink or on the on the nets uh, at, while my mom was coaching. And here. Did you want to be a hockey player, Scotty? Yeah, that, that was the goal for me. I always wanted to. I, that's how I got started in figure skating is. I kind of got got tricked into it and um but then everything really changed when Tess came and there was an energy there because when she walked into the rink and she had kind of just started and she had all this athletic ability um she was a, a gymnast a great dancer and you know putting on skates I mean she wouldn't say that but it just worked for her so here's here's this girl that's two years younger than me can skate just as fast as me which was kind of my thing at that age at nine years old and jump higher than me and i think my aunt was finally like oh my god maybe someone can help me keep this kid in line from throwing snowballs and i was just such a jackass at that age i didn't why everybody comes to me like what can i do to get my kid more interested in and can skate I was like well you should first of all know that i hated it like <laughs> i did not want to go figure skating ever all i wanted to do was play hockey until tess and then so much of the love for the sport and and for ice dance came with our energy that we had together do you feel that way when did that start to you said right away tess but when did when did the two of you start to realize that you had something really kind of cool i mean again when you when you get into dance or pairs or as a team most teams don't stay together for very long, you know, but you stayed together and you went through so much together. And I don't want to fast forward to, to all the gold medals in that, but you know, input equals output. Uh, I mean, one of the things that people don't see is how much work the two of you had to put in. Take us through what those, those early years were like, the hours you had to spend, the money that was spent, not only from your families, your friends, your community. Uh, it did take a couple of communities to build champions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I'm not sure that I can delineate my feelings for skating, the love I have for the sport as a separate entity to what I experienced in the partnership with Scott, like that they were so intertwined and connected. I wouldn't have skated if not for Scott, I wouldn't have pursued that. I would not have found um, such passion. And Part of that, I think, was realizing early on that we had a shared vision. We had a common goal and that we needed each other to be our best in order to achieve anything. And I don't know, Scott, if you remember this differently, but very early on, we realized that it was up to us to build one another up. We needed to bolster that sense of support and and really cultivate this unconditional place that uh, a place of safety place of trust of loyalty um, and everything just built on top of that and i think the longevity or speaking of rod 
oh my gosh, it was so much work and it was such an investment. And we intentionally prioritized that every single day. But that was also the most rewarding and the most fulfilling because that was the root of all gratification in, in sport, at least from my experience. Yeah, it's not easy, Scotty. I mean, one of the things too is that, you know, you got to get up early, you got to do this. I mean, I, I know you went to hockey practices too, and they're hard. And you got to put that stinky wet hockey equipment on. <laughs> But at the same time, the hours that are spent, the hours away from school that are spent, the tutor that has to go on, you go around the world as well. I mean, all of those things, I mean, yeah, there's a love, a palpable love that you have, that joy. But there had to be days when you went, oh, my God, I got to get up and I got to go to the rink and I got to skate. Really? Yeah. Or, or did that happen? Uh, a lot. I mean, I, when I look back now, a lot less than you would think. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, well, that's I why you became champions. Yeah, I do remember the Friday nights, for example. We used to skate Friday nights, Saturday mornings, and wow. you know, you'd be at school on Friday, be talking with your friends, and make all these plans for the weekend, and then get home and remember, oh, like crap, I actually skate all weekend long, and come home and about three o'clock on Saturday. So that's none of those plans are going to work. So you, pretty naturally, you kind of feel like uh, you're missing out, and until I really until we retired after 2014 did i realize that you know that wasn't the case at all and even at that age we also got to travel to europe to asia to all across canada so uh we had really this very cool experience this cool upbringing and for tess and i what what really bonded us um was this relationship that we were building but we we were addicted and like we wanted to win and we didn't even take a breath so for so many of those early years like through juvenile pre-novice novice junior like we didn't win novice and man that pissed us off i think until 2010 so <laughs> like we we just we were so fired up and i don't know i think we come from competitive athletic families so part of that is it's just our nature but when i look back at those two kids i'm i'm pretty amazed now to be like wow and almost, and my buddies would probably tell you that very close to me having something wrong with me, like it was a little obsessive. Uh, well, but My sense too is that in your coaching, you've reflected on us being students, especially so young in a different way, or maybe seeing, you see it through a different lens. Yeah, I think so. I, I when, And it's funny because today, uh, yeah, I stand at the boards teaching against one of our first coaches. Yeah, you're coaching uh, I, now. You're yeah, coaching. I know. It's crazy. I love you're it. You're not old enough to coach. I I'm know. Thank you for that. There you go. But it is It is pretty. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Don't wear a fur coat ever. Please just yeah. don't wear a fur coat. I don't want to see it. Oh, shoot. Yeah. I, that other better, get a chance. Um, I, think, <laughs> I think it is pretty wild to look back at us. And our coaches also knew exactly how to motivate us, knew – they didn't treat us, you know, when we were 14 and 16, trying to win the junior title and which is the same ages as it is in hockey, you know, like that's, I mean, kind of making Connor Bedard look like he's kind of behind the pace, no big deal. <laughs> but uh, at the same time for, for our coaches, they, they didn't treat us like that. We, we gave them everything we had and, and they did too. And, you know, that kind of started to snowball into, to our career and having to leave Canada and, go to Detroit to work with some Russians and oof, there's a lot of years to unpack in there. How much time do we have? Bro? No, you think about how life has changed. Like oh, think yeah. about how life has changed. I remember visiting you guys down in Detroit. And, and again, I, you know, you think about the, the impact that Russia has had on this sport yeah. next to Canada, probably, you know, one of the superpowers in the sport through the years. And then you think about politics and everything else that goes on and think about politics in this sport. I mean, we, again, we could go on forever about judging and whatever. Yeah. But to know what's happened in the world as well with mm -hmm. Russia now and how, you know, that wasn't like that back, back then. And you probably have to tell some of the kids, go, well, well look at these Russians or what mm -hmm. Hey, politics is politics. I mean, they're still, you know, among your amongst your greatest friends and how the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian skaters used to skate with Russian skaters and vice yeah. versa. I mean, did, did you ever test think about, I mean, beyond the judging aspect of this, uh, of, 
how this sport was one of the first sports that ever broke down borders where Canadians could go skate in the United States where Russians could skate in the States where people could come from all over and skate and go and get trained by the best. There wasn't really a border. We, we played it on TV. Oh, here's Canada against the United States, the showdown, the bat. It wasn't like that. It wasn't really off the ice like that. I mean, you competed. I know you were fiery and you wanted to win, but you competed against your competitors. You mm-hmm. didn't compete against a country, I don't think. Right. That's a, it's an interesting way of thinking of it. And you're right. It's unique to skating because for our entire career, we trained alongside our greatest rivals, as you know, Rod, and we shared a coaching staff. And when I tell people now, even, you know, who aren't so familiar with the intricacies of figure skating, that seems ludicrous. But you're right that in some way, while that may seem divisive, it was quite unifying. And I think what maybe struck us more was the Olympic experience. And, you know, I think that's changing now, unfortunately, but there really was the sense that the world was, you know, put on pause and everyone could come together for some greater cause, some greater good. Um, you could rally a nation, you could stand united. It, it felt so powerful and, and that was through sport. And so I think we, we certainly felt that being part of Team Canada. So, let, so let's go to 2010, Scotty. Um, it's still one of the greatest thrills was calling that for, for you guys to win that Olympic gold medal, watching you there. And, and honestly being, I, I never really get too emotional <laughs> during any events. But to know where you had come from and to know that was the ultimate dream to, to win that Olympic gold medal and the way you did it and in Vancouver. I mean, are there days still that that, uh, you know, when you're at sleep at night, do you, is this, do you still conjure up some of those images from from it, it seems yeah. like yesterday, but goodness, it's 13 years ago. Yeah, that's that's wild. And that that's what I feel as a coach now. Like you look. <laughs> The kids are like, yeah, oh my gosh, I remember 2010. Like, that was the, my first year in school. Or we're somewhere born. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A lot of them, hey kid, Google us. A lot of them when I talk about our first <laughs> Here's YouTube Olympic, Olympic experience in Torino, like because we were first alternates and that, and we really thought we should have been on that team, and um, you know that really motivated us to never put ourselves in that position again. We we didn't want to be the on the on the outside looking in ever again we want to be the number one team and so when i tell that story they're always like oh yeah that's the year i was born it's like oh boy but (laughs) to think that uh, 2010 was that long ago is pretty crazy and uh i think we were we were pretty fortunate at that time we were training in america um you know like the whole ctv tsn did some fantastic things for the olympics but we hadn't won a world title um, nobody had ever won an Olympic Games before winning a world title in ice dance. Definitely nobody would ever thought that a 20 and 22 year old would be able to do that. So we weren't really on the radar until about, you know, December of tw- uh, 2009. And I remember CTV called and said like, oh, we just realized you guys are a real metal threat. We better do a special on you. <laughs> so we had to kind of throw one together. But I think at that stage of our career, you know, T and I had just gone through quite a hard part of our partnership. Um, Tessa just coming back from an injury. We had a lot of growing up that happened in, in that time and uh, didn't gel together. Uh, and so the kind of the 12 months before the Olympics was there was a lot of chaos, but I don't think we understood the hype of a home games. I don't think we training in America, we didn't see a lot of the media. We had kind of we had uh, mentors like Dave Peltier and Marnie McBean, who gave us enough so that we would understand what the Olympic Games would be like. They prepared us amazingly, um, so we felt like when we stepped on the ice, we could take advantage of the opportunity. But I think they also sheltered us in a way and allowed us to just really focus on our craft and. Um, that's where we started to really feel and, and take advantage of our Canadian Olympic team was with, with some of those alumni athletes uh, to be able to give us some of those pointers. But I think if we'd walked into 2010, like we walked into 2018 uh, with all the hype and excitement, um, understanding what the Olympic game means to, to Canadians. Uh, I don't know if we come out with that. I mean, I'd like to think we, we would, but 2010 was an incredibly personal experience. Um, even 
we always look up and see our families. Uh, but in those moments dancing together, I think that was the most intimate. Um, just one, like a, a boy doing it for a little girl, like that he grew up with. And that's really what it felt like. We hugged before and it was just like, Hey, maybe, maybe we can do this thing together. And it was really for each other. And it was so beautiful and pure. Um, and yeah, it made the 11, 12, 13 and 14, maybe a little bit harder. Cause I don't know if we ever really recaptured that, uh, until probably 2018, but, uh, in many ways, it was such a fairy tale, and we were able to surround ourselves with people that really helped us to get there. So, I don't know if it was completely on purpose. <laughs> like 2018, it was calculated. We knew what we were doing. We left no stone unturned, and we'll get to that. Uh, but in 2010, a lot of things um, kind of fell in our favor in order for us to feel the way we did when we took the ice, which was so beautiful and pure. Same for you, Tess. I guess that's a fairy tale story, but beyond the fact that again you were coming back from that injury and and, and all this stuff away from it. Plus, I, I know you say you were kind of off the radar and you didn't win a world title, but you know when you're competing at home ice, um, you know that there's there's pressure there too. Uh, yeah. What was 2010 like for you? 2010 was a chaotic, painful storm until we took the ice at the Pacific Coliseum for me anyways, or at least that's how I remember it, which sometimes Scott tells me uh, is through rose colored glasses, but. No, that's I was, accurate. I was in so <laughs> much pain. I remember we were on site in Port Moody doing some training after the opening ceremonies. My legs were so bad that I couldn't get through run throughs. I was crying, sitting oh, on the bench, just thinking, you know, how, how can we possibly make it to the end of the program, let alone make it to the podium and i certainly didn't feel like I, I was at my best physically and i think you know when when scott so beautifully articulates that feeling of coming together it was because that was survival mode and we needed each other we needed to rely on that and this force that was between us sort of transcended our athletic pursuit in some way because we were on the ice and totally in a flow state convinced we had convinced ourselves we were ready we were prepared we loved our material and somehow we just rose to the challenge together and probably with some analysis it's because we were doing it for one another and it's because you know i felt scott deserved that moment on home olympic ice i probably thought of it more through his lens than mine so yeah, it's it's neat. It's actually really fun to reflect on that and to hear Scott's take on it. But it was awful until it was like heaven. You know, it was so <laughs> nice, and that felt like we were floating, and it felt like everything fell into place, and it just felt perfect. But um, I know that might seem like it doesn't add up. <laughs> well, you know, so yeah, when you think about it, your career's aren't supposed to add up, right? Like when you think about it, like you look at it, like where you come from and you, like you say, kind of the long shot kids early on, but you do the hard work, uh, you have your spats, you piss each other off a little bit <laughs> once in a while, you come back, you win, you have, a, and I, I like what you said, you guys said about how much you love to win. And, and that's one of the things people always say, what's, what, what are Tessa and Scott? What are they really like? And all the, beyond the obvious questions you guys have always heard through the years, are they having an affair? What Are they married? Yada, yada. <laughs> We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> but Good, finally. The, the, the thing that the thing that I, I always said is that if you look in their eyes, they're winners and they have a fire underneath that in this pristine sport of dance and you know the music and the aesthetics that exist. You guys had that. You were performers, but you also treated this art like a great, great sport. I love that, Tess. I love the fact that every time I could see that in your eyes and you got that great smile and you're looking, but underneath there was that steely determination and you went, no, not this time. We're going to do this despite everything else that went on. Where did that come from? Honestly, I'm not sure. I don't know. I have this weird feeling. Scott, I'm curious to know if you feel this too. Like if it wasn't skating, it would have been something else that I oh, yeah. would have wanted to be the best at. So I think that's that was just sort of innate in me. Do you feel that? Yeah, I think it kind of goes hand in hand. I mean, 
I feel I still feel like that for you. <laughs> like <laughs> I still think there's gonna be many things that I I I know that you're gonna do even better than what it's hard to believe. But from what I reflect, and I'm interested, Roddy. Am I call, Roddy? I usually call yeah, you. you can call me Roddy. I don't know what people call you. You can call me Roddy. You can call me whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> so, anyways, Roddy. I'm interested to hear because, yeah, like you've done so many things in your career, and the more Tess and I do events like this or sit down mm -hmm. and actually talk with someone that we love and trust, I think we learn about how yeah. what we went through together, and you know, like 2010, we were because it just happens. I think, right, Scott? I think. Life just like you're saying the same thing. Like, I'm only a sports announcer and I do sports and I love all the games. And people ask me all the time, well, what is your favorite? And I, I'm lost at words because it just flies by so fast. You don't think about that stuff. Yeah. You, you know, know, you don't think about it. Rod, I'm sorry to interject, Scott, but I know that you'll totally like get this. When we stepped into the broadcasting realm just briefly and we got to work alongside you yeah. for those events. That was so cool. The biggest biggest takeaway for us was that you care and the whole crew cared. And I think that was a little bit lost on us as ignorant athletes. You know, we, we had a bit of a disconnect and when we got to see behind the scenes and peer behind the curtain of, of what it's like to work next to you in a figure skating event. Oh my gosh. The, the depth, the level of analysis, the, the genuine desire for everyone. The heavy drinking late at night. <laughs> that too. That too. <laughs> no, you just wanted to tell stories. And that was yeah. so, like, that left a real impression on both of us. Well, thank you. But and I will tell you, it was, it was our pleasure. What was that, Scotty? Sorry to interrupt, Rob. I just, no, no, it no. was just so huge for the sport. I mean, the years that that crew were able to bring that yeah. quality broadcast for the sport of figure skating to Canadians. I mean, it was top notch. I think about you and Tracy calling. Uh, it was always such an honor and so strange to look up and feel that comfort as an athlete. We always yeah. used to find you guys, always, mm -hmm. and it would feel like nationals. So Yeah, a little wink felt like. A little wink. And, and again, we're, we're all, the thing sort about of. what I loved about covering skating um, is that in normally, as a, a sports announcer, you know, you got to be unbiased. And and we truly were. I mean, again, I, I mean, I secretly cheered for you guys, but every other so. skater you, you love, you know, and, and it's a, such a hard sport. You're out there for four and a half minutes running a marathon on skates. And, you know, you're you're like, oh, my gosh. Like, uh, and then to, to just to be able to do that. And there was no real, like, people had that Harding Kerrigan thing about figure skating at the time. And that might have been one incident. And there might have been some hatred or I don't even want to go bitterness that existed. In, I found in men's skating in particular, there was some real angst. There was in pair skating, I think, in dance, whatever. But the beauty is that you kind of saw that in every skater and you saw that pure love and joy. And you guys had that. I, I loved seeing you on the ice that. I kind of felt embarrassed after a while going, okay, I don't want to jinx them, you know, or <laughs> if it was Tracy that was sitting there. But I, do, I so it is when, when you guys were skating, you grew up in it. Um, skating was this rock star sport on television. It was unbelievable. It, they had ratings that were through the roof, uh, better than than hockey on Saturday nights. I still, by the way, believe that that could happen again. I I, I firmly do, and I, I I don't know where the disconnect is. But you know, you guys skated in that just before that, or just after the Elvis, Kurt, yeah. Shailen Bourne, Victor Kratz, who I'm sure were huge heroes to you and predecessors to you. But well, skating doesn't have that kind of buzz that it had back then. I, Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe it just doesn't seem to have, and maybe it's because there's a proliferation of so much, yet it's still the greatest, one of the greatest sports around, and it still has this unbelievable athleticism to it. People always say, oh, well, what's the, who are the greatest athletes? I, I'll say skaters. Skaters are the greatest athletes I've ever been around. It's not even close because what you have to do. But why is that? Why? What, 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 what do you have to do to get that buzz back, do you think? I'll, Tess, you can go and then Scotty jump in. Oh, well, Scott, actually, I mean, I, I'm going to pass the buck because I feel you have much more kind of weighty analysis here. We do talk about it often. I mean, I I, I don't have the answer. I think, Rod, you would probably have a, a more insight. But for me, I think there are problems that exist in the sport that people are tired of. Um, I think that 
yeah, it's the fool me once type of a thing. Like after the fourth and fifth judging scandal, people are just wondering why they want to watch a sport that they're not sure the outcome isn't totally fixed. And I think that's still one of the biggest problems. And we hide behind that it's a judge sport and that, you know, it could be, that's always going to be like that, but there are judge sports that are done better, I believe. So I think that does have something to do with it. Um, the politics that surround stuff like that uh, and seeing the same nations come forward over and over. Um, yeah, it, it's disappointing, but I think that there's a better way. And if we're ever going to get back to that, we need to, to change that. So that's, that's going to be, that's kind of why I'm still involved in the sport. That, this mm -hmm. fuels me. I, I agree. Like, like you did. And, and, Rod, hearing you, Todd, jeepers, Rod, hearing you talk about uh, your passion for the sport, I remember in one of those late nights having some drinks with you talking about what, what you really thought the sport meant to Canadians and um, to hear someone like you talk about it like that made me believe in, in what I felt and um, I think had an effect on trying to to make the sport a little bit better and bring Canada kind of back to where I think we should be. I mean, we should be an elite skating country. I mean, looking back at all these fantastic skaters that we've had, choreographers, coaches, and um, it would be nice to get that country back and, and to be able to have skating just kind of take a step up. So that's my opinion uh, very quickly on how, I'm, how, how to change the world of skating. But I do think that it's it's just spreading around too. There's a lot of really – fantastic interesting sports and uh skating was huge um through the tanya and nancy scandal and mm -hmm. the world has changed a little bit as well i think there has something to do with it yeah tests uh, it, it it costs a lot of money too from a federation point of view um you guys i don't have to tell you how, how much it takes to build a champion you guys skated in i call the golden era yeah of skating when everybody was winning and it, and are we an accessible sport I mean, yeah, yeah. Generally, I would look at yeah. people who skate and say, nah, probably not," and that that's probably something that needs to change. Like, not every Canadian has access to the sport of figure skating, and then do they have access at a, at a high level? It's it's tough. And, and yet, it's the most pure form in, in Canadian sport tests. Like, think about it. You you know, beyond soccer and basketball, which is very easy. I mean, almost every kid in Canada has. Maybe climate change might change a little bit, but been able to get out on an ice rink. That's how we all started—a a love of getting out on an ice rink and 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 feeling like you could fly on on a sheet of ice. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Scott and I have always been big proponents of getting kids to talk about, you know, the access point um, through which people can experience sport, whether it's skating or something else. We really wanted kids to have exposure to so many different activities because we so believe in the power of sport. We believe in yeah. the life lessons, in the teamwork, the goal setting, the failures. I mean, that list is endless of what we think the benefits can be. And so, yes, it's a mandate for both of us, I think, to, to try and keep kids in sport, to get more kids in sport and, and skating, of, of course, is close to our hearts. And, and you're right, I think access is something. And when you get to those higher levels, how do we make it more manageable for the families? Because it is such an extraordinary sacrifice. And the, you know, in, in skating, we always thought we were so lucky because at the top and you can do shows and, and earn a bit of a living. But even that is sort of a dying market because the landscape is just saturated with so many options of you know where people can spend their money on tickets and so i think maybe there needs to be some fresh creativity to breathe new life into what this sport can be both competitively and professionally um but i look forward to watching scott pave the way yeah, yeah i was going to say tessa virtue choreography could really be what takes us to the <laughs> promised land i mean i was lucky enough to watch her work for 20, wait, 22 years included our pro career, right, kiddo? Or was that just mm -hmm. our amateur? What's 97 to 2018? What's the math on that? That's 22, right? Yeah, so I think we had then the extra couple. Whoa, right? so I've been telling people we skated together for 22 whoa. years, and that's not even true? We did, 20 years of... Okay. She blanked you out for two years, Scott. Well, you were I there. Gave her plenty of reason to do so, that. So, so, hey, okay. So maybe, maybe what, what goes on the broadcast stays on the broadcast, and you know whatever. Uh, but like again, your team, your partnership—it's uh, so unique. 
I mean, you, you had to you have some scraps, uh, some verbal wars. <laughs> take, take it. Is there any that are that are memorable that are? I mean, you clearly got through it all, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, again, this is the first interview that you've been apart, mind you, but it's OK. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, there had to be. Uh, and, and who was the one that started and who was the one that said, OK, I'm sorry or whatever? I mean, it, it's inevitable, right? Well, yeah. It's Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, now they're fighting. <laughs> no, you go ahead. So I'll, I'll, I've great. been talking a lot, man. No, uh, just to, to Ron's last comment, I was going to say we did practice starting the difficult conversations. Mm -hmm. And where I think we landed was that the ice was at this safe place. It was sacred. And we got on the ice and we knew we had a job to do and we didn't miss a moment of being effective and efficient in training because we had watched as teams sort of crumbled around us by blaming one another by you know fighting and bickering and trying to coach each other and we we really vowed early on not to go down that path especially on the ice so any of our i would say most of our any of our arguments happened off the ice but we did also practice starting the difficult conversations which lead to like an evolution of communication in that then it opens the door for apologies and understanding and empathy. And uh, I'm, I won't say it was perfect by any means, but we really did come to a place where we had some methods that worked for us, some tactical tools that we could implement when we were not thriving together. And I think as well to kind of add on to that is now, you know, that to, Tessa has Mo and I have Jackie and we have our separate lives. So I'm much more comfortable saying things about the love, the real love that Tessa and I had for each other. Cause I don't think people would understand. You know, every time we'd say that before they'd, they'd kind of cheapen it to whatever they thought was their rom com -y movie. But because we had this real love for each other and we were quite, quite, we really cared about each other and what each other thought. Um, so it was hard. Like we did have some periods where we weren't getting along off the ice and we're able to keep it professional. Um, but we both understood that that wasn't what made us really click. That wasn't where our magic was. Like we needed to really be there for each other. So in, in some ways too, it also went hand in hand. Like there was a lot of real care there. Um, and we needed to know that we had each other's backs uh, in order to really fully trust each other. And, we had two major instances where, um, yeah, there was some real difficult stuff off the ice and um, we had to start um, from from almost nothing again. Uh, they were really, really tough, but I thank God we went through them because then it came our most beautiful parts of our partnership. And then the, the we were able to build trust and, um, you know, kind of go through those hard times together and come out better for it. But at those times, I mean, there was, a there was, I think people would be surprised to know that we were close to not making it through. And, and mm -hmm. one in 2009, um, shortly after the world championships and we're like 11 months out of the Olympic games where we're kind of living our fairy tale. So um, we always like to tell this part of the story, not to be over dramatic, but just so people can understand that, your relationships like your work relationships or when you're building something together you really care about it takes it just takes work like we we sat and worked and we we gritted it out and uh it was it was really really tough times and it was super emotional but thank god we did it yeah you said the magic though and that's what you guys have i mean i, I could probably go an hour with all of your the things that you you've accomplished i mean all the titles you've had i mean you're the goats like you're the goats of ice. Stand. I mean, I don't. I remember when you were a kid and you were a goat, and Let's, and the goat goat was actually not good, and now being a goat is really good. But look, like if you look at it, and I know you're so humble, and uh, yeah, let's you've done Chris it all. Like all that, those, <laughs> all those things you've done. Like, what is the one that you're most proud of? All of the you just got the Order of Canada. Uh, mm -hmm. You're in, um, in every Hall of Fame imaginable. Uh, you've done so much. What is the thing that you're most proud of? Tess, you can go first. I mean, Scott's going to have an answer after this, and I'm going to 
changed my mind, I'm sure. The thing that, <laughs> I'm so um, happy you're going first. The thing that comes to mind first is carrying the flags at the opening mm -hmm. ceremony, carrying the flag at the opening ceremony in 2018. That, that was such a moment. And it was a moment, I remember when we found out that, you know, we were asked to do that. And I remember just standing in front of that team of our heroes and idols and just thinking like, why us? Why, why do we have this honor and responsibility, but just feeling like it, it so encapsulated all of the things that we felt it meant to be Canadian. And we wanted to embody those things and we wanted to be those people that deserved it. And I mean, I think that was, that was a real Olympic moment for me. Yeah, I'll, I'll never, I'll never forget walking in and looking back and seeing uh, MP and even see, seeing Chitty and seeing Mick Kingsbury and you know, yeah. that was a that was a really tight team and because I don't know if it was just timing but every seemed like everybody but three Olympians were at all the games with us and you yeah. know ten and fourteen and eighteen together and. I don't know to have the respect of that group that we always just felt so honored to be a part of um that i'll never forget but i for me it's got to be that it's got to be 18. uh the being able to win the dice dance event um the team event was super cool i felt like we played a major role in rallying what was already an extremely talented team but most people in the figure skating world thought we were over the hill um except for us and and we kind of believed in each other and I thought that that was super, super cool because you don't actually compete together, but there was some, I keep using the word magic. It's like I'm a wizard or something or, but uh, I, I, we lifted each other up somehow by believing in each other and doing it for each other and kind of the power of the team and, and, and doing it for someone else instead of yourself. But um, what we were able to accomplish in terms of, kind of going back to our reinventing our skating, um, trying to be gutsy with our material, uh, and then to be able to compete against Gabby and Guillaume, and who are uh, one of the technical, best technical ice dancers to, to ever step on the ice, to be able to compete against them and win uh, at Olympic Games was pretty huge for us. And it was all the training that went in, and we talked about Tessa and, when she stepped in the venue for 2010 and she was superhuman. Like she just said, this is, this is our, this is our venue. And I heard her say it, but I really felt like she was saying, this is my venue. And she was, <laughs> like, you just come along with me or, or, or else kind of thing. Um, but in 2018 or 2017 and 2018, really it was every day like that. You know, she, she was scary uh, in the gym, on the ice, Pilates, dancing, nutrition. Um, she was a terrifying athlete, which was unbelievable to see. Um, so most of the time when I think about what we've accomplished, it very quickly goes to 2018 uh, because we gave everything we had um, and we were able to come out on top. You know, look at all the stuff that's that's come with it, though. And like, first, I, what, what do you guys do with all your medals? I mean, really? like yeah, Scotty, when you're back That's home, do you, do you, wear, you wear it down to the bar or uh, test it? Yeah. I mean, I, do you do you have a competition with Morgan saying, "Hey, look at I got these. What do you got?" <laughs> it would no, be just, nice to see Mo get one of those. Yeah, I, I think he'd like something a little uh, uh, more gray and silver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, you, you guys, I know you guys. You you, you didn't like winning silver. Uh, your future husband wants something silver, <laughs> if you know what I mean. You know what? I think though, everybody the in silver Toronto is so was good for so many jokes, and yeah. we were so proud of our silvers. So I always like to say that because we felt like we kind of did that all on our own. <laughs> Those that year leading in was pretty outrageous. Um, however, it's such a great beer league hockey joke. Like everywhere I am with my buddies, they're always just like, "Ugh, 
but you wouldn't want to get two silvers or someone would be like, Hey, what do you do with your Olympic medals? And then one of them would be like, Oh yeah, well I have the silvers. He didn't even know where those are anymore. Or make some joke. Like I don't <laughs> care. Or they just make fun of me for being second, which I thought was pretty offside considering we have five Olympic medals and only two. Yeah. Gold. <laughs> yeah. The old joke as well. Hey, the guy sitting beside you, I have five Olymp between the two of us. We have five Olympic medals. I mean, that's the way. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> So, so Tess, there had to be some great stories about like, some of your, some of your medals. Like, are there greats mm -hmm. like showing to kids some inspiration, yeah. maybe something funny, maybe you've lost it or a medal or whatever. What are your best medal stories? Uh, Tess, you can, you can start. We were always really um, free and open about wanting as many people as possible to touch all of our medals. And I remember <laughs> there are a lot of stories, I will say that, but being at um, Hockey House in 2010 after we won and we kept chucking our medals into the crowd of people and, you know, slowly it would make its way back to us and we were celebrating, obviously. And it wasn't until the end of the night that I realized we had bodyguards and I think the bodyguards were really just for the medals. Um, yeah. And then I proceeded to check my medal in my... Uh, luggage when we flew home from Vancouver. <laughs> uh, so I remember telling someone on the flight, like, is, was that a bad thing? Do, do we know my luggage is on here? Um, Have you seen what's happened to luggage lately? Just saying. That, I know, I know. Hey, and I, was... I, I do remember, I don't want to throw you under the bus, Scott, but I do remember we could, because we've switched medals so many times. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Know but um, there was a time that we could distinguish between mine and Scott's because his the ribbon on his just reeked of fear. <laughs> yeah, it did so well, Ali. That's gonna shock a lot of people. So, I, I'm, how did you like beer? How dare you? Um, <laughs> no, the the best was that was as close to being rock stars as we ever got. I think. Well, for me, anyways, like when we flew home and we had just gotten that, we just had a roots deal, so we I think flew home with like what. 14. 23 bags. <laughs> Air Canada checked 23 bags for us. Like they just kept coming out. I was like, oh, this is getting a little bit embarrassing. And then Tessa's medal is in one of those random sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were living living large in 20 and 22. Oh, that's hilarious. That is hilarious. And, and now, and then now, life takes over again. I, you know, so it's so funny. When I was covering you guys, you did retire. You retired, and then you unretired, and Thankfully, you did. Uh, we knew you were coming back. That was not a secret, by the way. Um, but ah, yeah, it wasn't, but but we didn't know. Oh, uh, I think you did. <laughs> but but uh, here is the thing. Now, life is, is, is it takes over, and all the stuff. There's other stuff in life. I mean, skating consumed you. You were rock stars. You still are rock stars. Uh, but Scotty, your daddy, you married in yeah. a daddy. Uh, Tess, uh, going to be a mommy someday. You're getting, you're getting <laughs> married. Zoe. You're getting married. Oh yeah. You got to forget. Where's Zoe? The dog Zoe. <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, by the way, one of my favorite guys in the world, Morgan Riley, who everybody loves and, uh, would love to see him win a Stanley cup. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, baby. But, but tell, tell me about life now. First of all, do you miss, do you miss skating and, and how much do you still see each other? Not enough. Yeah, definitely not enough. We, I mean, we still try and keep in touch as much as we can, but we it's not enough. And we, I mean, I feel like then we revert back to reminiscing and you just so quickly get back into that. Like we have this shared language. And I recently, well, when we did the Order of Canada ceremony um, the night before we got together and Scott Scaling was there and I had to apologize to everyone because I said, I'm so sorry. We must be really annoying when we finally get be reunited um i miss i don't necessarily miss getting on the ice every day but i do miss dancing i miss the choreography and i miss expressing myself through movement and i miss doing that with scott i miss that partnership and that sense of purpose that we had every day i, I certainly miss that um and the big stage too sometimes although i don't miss having to do all the work that it took to get there that's so weird because we just so happen to have an opening at the academy where you can come in and dance and perform and choreograph and get all of those, check all those boxes. Um, yeah, I, I am on the ice every day. So I get, I do move around a lot and get to do all my crazy wild antics, which I think is some way is really great. 
but you know, I, I kind of do feel like I still think I'm 20 years old on the ice with T. So, and every once in a while, I'll like grab one of uh, my students and talk gibberish to them and start skating and then be shocked that they don't know exactly. Like T and I used to kind of also have our own language and she was so brilliant, um, is so brilliant, but working on the ice, like it was a speed, like unbelievable what she can come up with and how creative she was. And every once in a while I have to stop myself and be like, okay, it's not fair for you to think that this 18 year old woman is, should be able to compute like Tessa Virtue. So, um, but some of my students are, are really coming along and if they can be even a fraction of that, um, that's pretty cool. But yeah, I miss the time. I miss the time together with Tess and it's, it's just a beautiful part of our life that we look back to. And obviously there are things that we both wanted to do um, that we had put on hold uh, for a long time. And the things that, you know, Tess is doing, I'm super proud of. And, um, you know, the school and everything, like we, we just can't do everything. And we felt like we had accomplished all we wanted to in skating. And we also felt like we had a legion of fans and very, we still were pinched that people loved and cared about our work and what we did and what we put on the ice. And in order for us to be fair and true to them, we expected ourselves to be at a very high level. And that we just became with our life starting to become more of, I guess, balanced or moving in different directions. It just became impossible for us to keep that up. So it would be cool to be like, I don't know, to skate together when we were 40, but we wouldn't have wanted to have the level drop off and, You'd be like Torval and Dean. Work to keep that. You'd be up. like Torval and Dean, skating near forty. You know that. Yeah, you know that. I think we'll be doing that behind closed doors. Yeah. Like, but the first thing she did, like when she came out to coach last year, she like grabbed my hand and was like, "Let's do a stroking pattern." I was like, "You didn't even want to do a stroking pattern like the week of the Olympics." Like, why <laughs> all of a sudden? <laughs> so there's no comeback then. This is the this oh, the, the, you are retired God. for. God. There's no. There's no. Comeback. I did a rock or fox shot the other day, Rod, and I was out of breath <laughs> going around the corner of the first so. I don't think I'm ready. Because it, one of the things about skating is, as we've seen in so many uh, different partnerships that, you know, you, you especially in pair skating, there's there's a musical partnerships. And the beauty is this partnership, this friendship for the U2 that, that will last always forever. Tess, you're so busy. I mean, bring us up to date. you got so many things on the go. And what what is the, the end game for you? Like, not end game, but what is your mm -hmm. ultimate goal beyond skating? What would you like to do? Mm. It's such a good question. Oh, by the way, are you are you both doctors? Did you didn't honorary. you get a like, didn't you didn't you become <laughs> honorary like doctors? Tess is gonna get a real doctor. Not that yeah, it's but not you're honorary real, doctors, right? So doctor. you're actually Doctor Moyer, <laughs> and you are Doctor Tess. Nice. Um, end game. You know, I think I uh, I always knew graduate studies would be in the cards for me after retiring from sport. Um, partly because I I was keen to just embrace a new challenge. And I, and there's something about that short ish term goal that I knew that it would kind of help structure my life around if I was working towards something, but I also wanted credibility. I mean, I'm working in the corporate realm uh, with Deloitte and I wanted to get a better understanding of that the same way I'm, I'm doing a master's of applied positive psychology at the moment. And I mean, Scott knows that's been my dream for more than 10 years. So, it's a bucket list thing for me to be doing, but it's also so seamlessly integrated into all the work that I, that I do um, around performance and well-being, and that obsession of not just being my best, but helping to unlock the potential of others has sort of grown. And I'm feeling that, you know, finding my way through that and, and it's really fulfilling. Um, and a lot of the lessons we learned in sport are applicable in business. So end game, I'm not sure, but I think what I feel anyways right now is that I'm equipping myself with the knowledge and the tools that I need or will need to take on the next chapter. And I think the end of this program, um, this next semester in particular, will, will be a bit of a roadmap for me. And I'm excited to really take that on. Wow. What, are you a bigger Leaf fan now than Scott even? She always was a equally as big not as but not as scotty you were you're diehard man yeah. we both grew up in in actually no you charlie was a house fan right so i was gonna say i grew up in a you know a household of blue and white yeah but everyone has 
everyone has brothers that just like the other te- just to be a jackass. Like that's Charlie. <laughs> he just loves the Habs just to be a jerk. Oh, there you that. go. But yeah, you are a huge Leafs fan. Well, everybody's cheering both of you on always. Uh, before we go, uh, I'm sorry, and I've been ke- kept you way too long, but it's like I miss you guys. I, I miss, really you, miss too. you guys. That's the only yeah. way we got to do something together here. Yeah, we should. I, I was going to say, you know, I, I still I have a dream that I, I'd like to do a Virtue and Moyer Christmas special. I really think that would be fantastic down the road. But and and you, we're not. I'm not going to do it on a Zoom. Okay, it's okay. not going to happen. Is there skating involved? Oh yeah, just oh, you know, oh, dear. Well, you yeah, know, again, we're we're just have, we need to get in shape. I was yeah. gonna no, say, it's I not going to be a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, well, no, maybe that's what will reinvigorate the sport. But here, I, I have um, a few quick, quick, quickies for you. Okay. I call it the quick eighteen, but I don't know if we we'll get eighteen in. Uh, oh, but I, you can come up with one answer, two answers, whatever. But uh, you guys go back and forth. Okay, is this cool? Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. With let's uh, go. Chance of Virtue and Scott Moyer. Uh, the best ice rink you've ever skated in? Ilgen Arena. Oh. I thought you were going to say best ice, and that would be Edmonton. Best ice rink. Maybe the one in Courchevel, France. Oh, nice. Uh, your favorite performance of all time? Pyeongchang, Moulin Rouge. Sam. Of ours, because now I'm realizing like, I'm feeling really good about myself. <laughs> Most embarrassing on ice moment. <laughs> oh boy. Were you just thinking of mine? I don't know. I've had a couple. I had a couple of wardrobe malfunctions. I, well, we've, we've seen that. I, I, I broadcast one and God love her, yeah. Shailen Bourne. Yeah. Uh, Basically was um, had a wardrobe yeah. malfunction, had a Janet Jackson during the uh, entire yeah, performance tough. in Nagano uh, at a world championship. Felt so bad for her. I know. Fortunately, it ne- I don't think it ever got out. So, but I went, oh man. Yeah. Yeah, it makes my toe pick embarrassing moment <laughs> feel. But you know, like I get to embarrass myself weekly when I get a, on my like 10 or 11 breakaways and usually shoot the puck into the corner with how terrible my hands are so well, we got to yeah. play some we got to play some beer league hockey test did, did you ever did you ever play any hockey have you no. played any oh she'd be so good though you would be so yeah. good i i i'm i'm worried about my hand eye coordination <laughs> well you, you got a good coach by the way at home uh, okay coolest thing that you ever did in skating coolest thing that you ever did in skating uh i loved our tour uh thank you canada tour being able to be on the to be able to go across the country and go into these little cities and thank our, our fans that supported us, you know, it makes up a lot of Canada, but I never got over being able to look around and you know, being on the ice with uh, Chitty and Elvis and um, being able to skate with these fantastic Canadian skaters, Joni Rochette. I never got over that. Hmm. Good answer. Yeah. Uh, skating led us to so many crazy and cool things and experiences and introduced us to people that I never would have ever imagined. Um, but I like that answer, Scott. Yeah, that's a really good one. Being able to actually produce our own tour that Mm -hmm. we felt we had control of and that was our vision was so special and what a way to go out to as we, um, you know, really left the sport for good. Uh, heroes, hero, heroine, who, uh, who was, uh, who was the person that, uh, you looked up to or people you looked up to growing up? Tess. Uh, Kimberly Glasgow, a ballerina. And I was just talking about him, so it's fresh in my mind, but um, Chris Hadfield was a huge hero of ours and, I mean, of everyone's, but we modeled a lot of our training after his methodology and what he wrote in his book and and shared. And mind you, the stakes were a little bit higher for him. Uh, We were just twizzling. But um, finally, when we got to meet him, it was like the biggest fangirl moment I've ever had. Maybe the only real fangirl moment I've ever had. He's the rocket man. Oh, He's he's the rocket man. The coolest. The coolest. Hey. Yeah, and he had one of the top two mustaches in all uh, mustaches. <laughs> I actually gave that mustache to him. Did you? I, I don't know if you know that. 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 It was true. I don't too. know if he's ever admitted that. He will never admit that. <laughs> yeah. I got rid of it. I gave it. It showed up on his face one day. And actually, uh, El- one of Elvis Stoiko's eyebrows, that was when I grew another mustache. That's one of his eyebrows. <laughs> I don't know if you know. I don't know if you knew that or not. Oh man, I still get the Stoico question, which I love. I actually miss Elvis. He's a he's a yeah. cool. Is dude. that the Eric Lindros question? Whether they had a scrap? 
Yeah, he, yeah. and he never he all oh, he lied to me the his whole life, never admitted to it. At one time, I got him close to admitting it, but no, so. I was there. Never happened. Close though, I think. Uh, so, um, but I'll bucket list the crap out of me. But do yeah, you yeah, remember that, Eric's hands? Me. Oh, I know. I wouldn't. I, like, would I don't not, even. Yes. I don't even care how much of a glass. No. Like I know his no. noggin got beat around a little bit, no. but that dude's hands, like Eric Lindros, is his, his own pairs team. I mean, I'm telling you, yeah. he's a big man. Maybe Seriously. it's Eric and I. Maybe it's Eric and I that are the. That's the. Maybe we, why we start that rumor right here. So, Scotty, when you were in that bar up in Muskoka and you had that scrap with Lindros and you knocked him <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. He's a great dude. I love Eric, by the way. Great heart. Yeah. Uh, just like Elvis. Okay. Um, you, uh, uh, Tess, you did say the bucket list thing that you want to do, but is there a bucket list thing that you guys would like to do down the road? Because skating has consumed you for your entire life. Is there Are there some things that you'd like to do, Scotty? Oh, man. Yeah. A ton uh i don't know why i'm thinking of safari right now but you really put me on the spot uh but yeah I, I just feel like i'm just starting to get into traveling for pleasure you know i always saw even when we traveled to work it was for work so i just feel like there's a lot of the world to be seen still for me and that's what i'm really into right now so that's kind of my bucket list thing if you're asking professionally i apologize um i didn't really answer that very well but it's quick so i realized that this was too long no it's okay <laughs> That's good. You got all the time you want. Tess? Um, this is random, but Yay. I, I like that. want to do. I mean, I said safari. So did you really have to? <laughs> uh, some kind of ballroom dance thing. <laughs> I don't know. If oh, I, yeah. Call, like call. I want to learn a routine or do one. Not a competition. Maybe, have but... you guys ever thought about like, again, because you may not be able to skate down the road or don't want to skate or what, or because of that work. Have you thought about like what is it so you think you get some of those dance competitions has anybody ever asked that. you no we've never been asked but um now we're not going. it'll be fun it'll be so fun How would you guys like because we can make that happen right now <laughs> tess is the one for that i am a little bit i that doesn't sound so great for me <laughs> <laughs> uh okay a, a skating maneuver that you would still like to try tess oh I mean, I don't know if it's trying, but I wish I I wish once in my life I could have the feeling of doing a spread eagle. Hmm. I can't do it, and I probably won't ever. So I'll live back. Hey, Mo. Sorry. I know this is like spread eagle. Is such a it's, that was a really hard. Um, <laughs> we'll edit that right. Spread eagle is you know when you one blade's going one way and the other blade's going the other way. But Mo can do it, right? I think they call the kids call it the Sid, yeah. the Sidney yeah. Crosby. Yeah. Can you be the Crosby? Yeah. You can. By the way, exactly like um, Morgan Mo Riley too. I mean, his skating skills, and I I don't want to speak for Morgan, uh, but I, I mean, you must be amazed, and I'm sure Scotty too, because Scotty, I do believe, is one of the best male skaters I have ever seen. But Morgan Riley is an incredible Thank skater. You. Yes, he can do the he can do the Crosby, right? I'm sure he loves when it's called the Crosby. <laughs> can he do a twizzle? That's my. That's thing, a spread though. eagle in hockey. He can do it, right? Yeah. 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 Well, and he can twizzle. I'll say that. I, um, can he do the while, Canada goose? That's for the thing. While, Mr. Kratz was uh, doing getting to build stuff with him. So I did see some twizzles. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, and, and, and Big Daddy Vic, man, he can still go. Like he was. Oh, I see his TikTok and his Instagram stuff, man. Yeah. He, he's hydroblading kids Tessa forever. Any day, anytime for the rest of my life. I think that we train that move so much. I think when I'm like 65, we can go out there. I'll try the goose. I think I'd still love have it. it in me. I want to see the goose. I love the goose. Love the goose. Yeah. What if I just cool. took it and backflip onto you? How would you react? I'll hopefully catch you. You know, I, I will <laughs> say like. 65. I, I mean, you know. You have boys that are like, well, you know, like, yeah, everyone's, you know, falls just happen when you're in lifts and they just, just happen. And I had a pretty good record. I will say we had a yeah. couple scary falls, but I never dropped yeah. you. But at 65, if they said, are you going to, or, or 70, maybe 70, 75, because I, I could, that could be great. If this, you know, this, this show takes yeah. off, we, you know, at 75, you're still skating and you go, can you still do the goose? And you could go, depends. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, you all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, we're going to go rolling along here. Uh, if you guys play Trivial Pursuit, who wins? Scott. Uh, me. Monopoly. Scott. Tessa. 
Chess. Scott. Me, yeah. Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Me. Scott. Oh, you're your video. You, uh, can, you uh, just picked the you pick the three things. Wow, which way is the camera? You pick the three things that I would have beat Tess at. That's about all we got. How Grand Theft pinball. Auto, Chess, and what was the third? Uh, um, Trivial Anomaly? Pursuit. Trivial okay. Pursuit, I think. That's actually, um, it would depend on the category because she knows the most random things. Well, if, speaking of video games, if there was a video game for skating, I always thought there should have been. I don't know if there ever was. There should have been. Who would you, Who would you pick that you would want to be in a video game of the skaters. It could be the skaters of the, the pantheon of skating. Tess. So I'm choosing. You can't be yourself, but you can be anybody you want. Like you you mm -hmm. make that that Stefan character. Stefan Lambiel. Mm. Tess of Virtue. Easy. <laughs> Even yeah, sometimes when I'm doing some choreography and I get to do the girl things, I realize how much fun they are. Like the woman <laughs> steps. <laughs> uh if they were making a movie, and they will make a movie about you two, they will. I know that. Who plays Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer? Scott. Well, that's a good question. Um, T, like you got a lot of movie stars that look like you. Notice how I said that? They look like you. Um, for me, I it clearly have to be Clooney or Pitt, right? Like, let's be honest. Maybe one of those other good looking ones. Yeah. Uh, like Liam Hemsworth. Yeah. Like when he's jacked, like Will Ferrell. Just... <laughs> Will Ferrell. Yeah. Like he, <laughs> we're, sl we're sliding off here. We're all yeah. bringing it back. Yeah. Tess? Uh, who's the one that I always just get mad that people said you look like? Um, the one, the, the <laughs> woman uh, from from Twilight. Yes. No, I think oh. I've just seen them pale and have darker. I didn't like that. I didn't think that there was anything. Oh, wow. there was some, like you had some Nicole Kidman years and Julia Roberts. Yes. A little bit. Well, not Julia Roberts so much. Did, did it kind of freak you guys out though? Uh, I remember after, you know, skating uh, after Virtue Moyer, that a lot of young skaters you know, it developed your style or your look. <laughs> like there were, I, I couldn't believe how many young female skaters I saw. Oh my gosh. Mm. They're, they're Tessa Virtue clones. They're, that's a Scott Moyer clone out there. Did you, that had to be, a, 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 it had to be an honor actually. What a tribute. Yeah, it was really nice. I mean, I think I, I found it funnier, Scott, like I remember seeing it when we retired that a couple teams before they took the ice, they would hug also the way that we used to do that. And it's more that I just wanted to say like, oh, but do you know the purpose? Like, <laughs> are you just doing it or yeah. <laughs> yeah. I to give them some, some tips, but uh, no, it, it's always lovely. And I think that is so flattering and, and we would have done the same. We would have mimicked. I mean, we, we always tried to carve out our own style and our own niche, but you know, you sometimes even unintentionally mimic, the people that you've grown up watching. Hmm. What uh, about favorite you? movie of all time? Scott. Do you get to ask you questions ever? Like, sure. I feel like sure, you can ask me any question you want, but wait, let's just, I got two more for you. Best movie okay. of all time. Uh, Shawshank or seven. I really got oh, into that. Shawshank. What a great one. Tess. Mm. Best movie of all time. Mm. Oh, come on. I, I know. Well, Princess Bread. Yeah, I was oh, going to say, great. what took so long? I know. Great, great movie. <laughs> did you see, Tessa, the, there was a really good HBO Andre the Giant documentary I thought you would no, like. No, no, I'll have to look at that. Do I you guys know that I got to know him really well? Really? I, oh, yeah. I, I grew up as a big wrestling fan, but uh, in Winnipeg, and that's where he kind of, he started in Minneapolis. Yeah. Andre Rusimov. And I got to meet him a couple of times. The biggest man. The stories of Andre the Giant. I, and I, that's an, how much beer and... <laughs> Scotty, how much alcohol this guy could guy. consume. But he was also, he was like that guy on Princess Bride. He was a friendly, friendly giant, except for one time. <laughs> he kind of disappointed me, but that's okay. He was in a cab and I saw him in Montreal and he was just unfolding himself, trying to unfold. And I said, Andre, and he, hello, how are you? How are you? I said, listen, my uh, younger brother's a huge fan. Can I get an autograph? He goes, no time, no time, no time. <laughs> And I, I now, now of course I can run a lot faster than him. I go, well, thanks a lot, Andre. Really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. See ya. 
really nice of you because I've been a kind of smarmy little guy. And I took off. <laughs> Don't I have to interview him the following week? No. And he was the nicest guy. I just wanted uh -huh. to let you guys know that. Okay. Uh, best binge show that you've watched? Tess. Mm. Well, during a quarantine period, um, I did eventually do Game of Thrones. And really? Yeah, it was really, really good. Yeah, I haven't watched it. Oh, wait. Yet. Also, the newsroom. Really? I'm still on that. <laughs> you? Blackie, you're asking, right? Oh no no, no. Scotty. Scotty. Oh, uh, I love. I'm loving Ted Lasso. I gotta say. Oh, I love it, man. Love. Have it. you watched this? No, I haven't. Oh, like, it's fantastic. Has Morgan watched it? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, there you go. I believe and I believe. Right, I believe. I believe. Things. Believe and believe. I'll tell you. It's funny. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. And the acting is spectacular. The casting is spectacular. Okay. And it's a great message for yeah. Yeah, it is. Boom, I can't wait for the next season. Uh, and Succession. I don't know if you guys have watched oh. Succession. Oh, no, I haven't. Oh, spectacular. Because you guys have gone into the media world. You'll see what truly really the media world is, is all about. Uh, two more. I got two more questions for you. Uh, Scott and Tessa, what is one question you've always wanted to ask the other? And it could have been during skating or even now. Oh, Tessa. no, we asked them all. I think you probably have. Yeah. Huh? It's got a an unlimited number of car rides with me where I peppered him with all of the Oh my God. What's your favorite yeah. you, you guys what basically know everything about each other. studio or whatever that game used to play. <laughs> I tried um, to terrify her by driving like a maniac and she still ask all these questions. Oh, that's, I mean, I will think of one. I'm just not sure that I can do it on the spot, but there, there is something for sure. Um, probably, and especially, probably yeah. something about the, what they're going to do down the road. I would all have, have a ton of questions for both of you too, because you got, you're both uh, engaging on such amazing journeys right now. Like as great as that sports stuff you did, the journey you're on now, uh, fatherhood, Scotty is incredible. There's nothing better than that being getting married tests in a new journey. Those are like, that's the next chapter that that's where, when you guys have dinner someday down the road, yeah, I soon. can't wait to hear about that. You know, I can't there's... wait. But the wedding, uh, I think you'll really, really enjoy it. And the fact that it's with Mo, who's a beaut. Um, it's so I don't know. I wish we had an answer. I hate when you get asked these rapid fire questions and you don't have yeah something. You know? like, uh, I just can't think. Is that such a copper? I have yeah. not. Um. Okay. Last one. Last one. Uh, and you can finish the sentence. Uh, I Scott Moyer or I Tessa Virtue. Uh, Tess, why don't you start? I owe all my success to. To Scott. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Of course. Yeah, we uh, we owe a lot of it to each other. Don't you? you know what I'm you, I didn't. I wasn't. I didn't mean to tee you up for that, but I genuinely feel that. Well, kind of. You put me on the spot. I was gonna say Rod. <laughs> Uh, Carol uh, Moyer, to both of us, to Carol. Yeah, here's to Carol. Yeah, yeah actually, think about it. Yeah. Aunt Carol, look what she did. That goes to show you that sparks, you know, fires can be ignited from just the littlest thing. Just somebody getting oh. an opportunity to meet somebody. And look, you guys changed, you, you changed skating. What, what is that like, though? When like, I used to, I remember I said it, I think I was one of the first to say it, and I got, people are going, no, no. And then, then it, they were, I said, they're the greatest ice dance team ever. I never, I never danced, you know, I, I play hockey and then Tracy Wilson also, no, they're the greatest. They're the greatest ever. That has oh, to be so cool to hear that. Well, to hear from two people that we respect so much, that's pretty cool still. And well, that's the hard thing, right? We don't ever, we don't get to really watch ourselves. We've only seen tape. And Scott's nurturing some young team now that will, beat all of our records and, and take that title. And that would be so cool. Well, oh. well, yeah. One thing for sure, you are the greatest. Uh, you're the greatest people, the greatest skaters, greatest athletes. Thank you so much. I, I took way too much of your time, but I mm -hmm. feel like I, I'm just catching up with you guys. So we'll have to do a dinner or we'll get together to plan that ice show. Uh, 
get ready for that uh, Virtue and Moyer uh, ballroom dancing competition yeah. that we're going to start. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe we'll just go to a Leaf game. So it could just, yeah, the last option sounds really good. We could be on a show called So You Think You Could Dance. It's pretty much the same. <laughs> well, yeah. listen, guys, thanks for your time. Um, I, I, I say thank you for me, but I say thank you to, to all the, the skating fans around the world. I know they miss watching you, but they do have YouTube and they have all those great memories. Uh, and, and Scotty you said the word. I think I used the word back in 2010. You, you both, you're, you're magic. Thank you so much. Um, just before we go, Rod, Tessa and I always wanted to do our own podcast, all right? And maybe we can get you on the hook. Are we allowed to ask at the end? Like, you know, we've just done yours. So I think this yeah. is the perfect. Yes, please. This is what you call I, a position of power, should be doing right, it. Tessa, if we're, in, if yeah. we're negotiating? Oh, I, I want to be. If I don't get asked, I will be. I just feel like you were such a good reporter, but I wanted to ask you so many things. Yeah, so I'm just a very boring person. I and wanted to. We and need you're to- very curious. That's what I loved about when you guys were in the booth with me. I mean, I love that. I mean, the fact that you said that earlier, Tess, about coming in. But, you know, we had a lot of skaters. And I've, I've worked with a lot of athletes. I think I set a record for most analysts ever <laughs> as a broadcaster because I did so many sports. You two were different. is because you came in and you just didn't, you just didn't come in and, and talk because you thought you guys worked at it. I remember how hard you worked. And you took that same work ethic off the ice. And you applied it to the booth. That's what made you sensational doing that. You could do that today, tomorrow, forever. Um, but well, you now your... that that is something we do want to do. We do want to do more work like that together. And how cool would it be to get insight from the yeah. best ever? Yeah. yeah so much well, fun. you should start with your own podcast. Although I, I say that podcasts and broadcast podcasts are kind of like buttholes. <laughs> Everybody's got one. <laughs> I didn't expect it. But, they, but they're only, the but they're, but they're only, they, 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 there's only so many good ones, right? Yes. And yeah. you guys make this one a great one. Uh, awesome. I like you. You're so right awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. It was so yeah. great to, to chat with two of my favorite humans. Yeah. Love you guys. <laughs> Look at you, Scotty. Uh, Look at you. I'm never Order room after. service. I Order some room service. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. My uh, room service will be here soon. Put it on Tessa's bill. <laughs> i'll see you guys soon thank you thank you bye well there they are and there they go love the two of them they have done so much for so many for so many years and they're just great people uh i still want to call them kids even though they're older kids i saw them when they were seven and nine years old i remember sitting and talking with debbie wilkes at a national championship i said well we got to put them on the air <laughs> look they're just so lovable and, and i do remember saying hey someday they could be future champions. Well, they were eight-time national champions. They became Olympic champions. They became world champions. And they are now members of the Order of Canada. They've had every title bestowed on them, and they're still so humble. They've never forgotten where they come from. Home is where the heart is, and their home is in Canada, although their gift has been to the world. Thank you, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer, for being the skaters that you have been, being the great people that you are. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you tune in to all of our previous broadcasts and some of the other names and other great stories. They're a lot of fun, like this one's been. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time, the next edition of The Rodcast. The Rodcast with Rod Black, brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win.